I promised them I'd get a better microphone so I could do better audio. No, I didn't get it yet. Wait, oh, are we recording? Hey everyone, in this week's newsletter, we're going to cover where to find our great print articles and newsletters online. You know, we do some great print ones, so we'll fill you in on that. Also going to cover some important financial planning topics on asset protection and also on what state to own your assets in. We're also going to cover a market update. It's been a crazy week. Janet spoke again, so we need to talk about that. And lastly, we're going to cover some scenes from California, what we've been up to this week. So stay tuned. Chris Grandy's June 19th weekend newsletter starts now. All right, everyone. So first up, um, our newsletters. You know that we do put out, some of you know that we put out a quarterly newsletter for the firm, Walnut Hill Advisors, at the end of each quarter. Uh, those are available online already, but I'm going to make a nice handy link on the side of this newsletter, email newsletter, for you to go to those if you want to read the firm quarterly newsletters, where I basically summarize what's the economic thinking and what's going on behind uh, the asset management side of the business and some financial planning topics. The second link you'll see over there is the Higher Purpose newsletter link. That's the newsletter I recently started. We put out a few issues where we focus on you achieving your higher purpose and your higher quality of life. So check those out. Uh, the password on the Walnut Hill page is zero, Z-E-R-O. Uh, the Higher Purpose will have no password on it. So um, check those out. Let me know what you guys think, okay? So uh, click the link for Walnut Hill Advisors quarterly newsletters. Z-E-R-O is the password and the Higher Purpose newsletter. Um, link on the side to the right of this newsletter is uh, there'll be no password on that so check it out let me know what you guys think okay all right so I have some wild attack birds behind me there they are they look vicious if you see me just disappear off this camera one of these things probably took me out um, anyway part two I want to talk about financial planning update. First is if you have a second property or a second or third car, perhaps out of state, uh, like we do, we have a car in California, make sure that is attached to your liability insurance policy, your umbrella policy, okay? Uh, I actually thought ours was. I thought I covered this with, with uh, Steve, my insurance specialist that many of you know and work with, uh, but I had not. Tracy, had, um, one of his uh, specialists, had told me that I did not cover the car under the umbrella. So. I told her to get right on that. So there was a hole in my planning right there. I didn't even see it. So I you know, did a checkup on myself and realized that wasn't there. So make sure if you, you know, own a house in Florida or Arizona and you own a car there, make sure both that house and car are covered under your umbrella policy. And if you don't have an umbrella policy, make sure you get an umbrella policy, okay? Great. Second part of the financial planning discussion I wanted to cover today was uh, the topic of, of um, asset protection laws from state to state. So, for example, like, you know, uh, each, I don't know if many of you knew this, but IRAs are governed under state law, not federal law, for many purposes. And so the asset protection rules around an IRA are state laws. And also, too, if, um, if you have a trust, that you have property in a trust or assets in a trust, that also falls under state laws. And the rules between from state to state are very different. So, for example, for my legal um, advisors tell me, I mean, California is not a great place to own an IRA. You have no creditor protection. It's just really, not no creditor protection, but it's pretty weak. And the trust rules here aren't so hot either. As opposed to something like Florida, where you can own a home with enormous homestead amount. You can own a $6 million house and have homestead protection, which means, you know, it's creditor protected. Their IRA laws are very strong and uh, they also protect annuities very well in Florida and their trust laws are strong. As you can imagine with all the retirees down there, they're going to make all the laws very friendly to hold retiree assets. Other states like Nevada have re a really strong um, trust laws and um, even my state of Massachusetts has pretty good laws protecting IRAs decent laws protecting insurance, life insurance and annuities. Uh, I was talking to one of my legal advisors. Rhode Island uh, is up and coming and they have some legislation in place, I'm not sure if it passed yet, on protecting insurance assets. But just understand this, if you own a trust, you have assets in a trust and you have um, IRAs which are effectively like a custodial trust, know that the state laws guide those and make sure you talk with your attorney legal or legal advisor about 
um, asset protection and if you have any exposures, you know, if you're a physician with, uh, with exposure to liability or have other kind of work that exposes you, or if you have anything else that, uh, you know, you're taking a high credit risk with your, uh, with your investments and you don't want that to come back on your personal life, then really need to take some effort there to talk to your attorney about proper asset protection. So just know that some states uh, are not so hot, some are pretty good at that, okay? It varies very wildly. Hey everyone, market update. Um, next part I want to talk with you is about what happened. I mean, this week basically the, the Federal Reserve, Janet, came out and said, you know, things are getting better, but we're not we're not seeing things as strong as we'd like to be to raise interest rates. Folks, I'm, I'm you know, they may just lose credibility and this and, and this is probably never going to raise interest rates. I don't think this economy can handle 1% interest rates. You know, we're at what, zero right now? I, I don't think they can handle 1%. The economy is not that strong. A lot of it is is investment related, you know, housing, and such. And these things thrive. You got to keep reducing the cost of money to make this thing work. And uh, you know, globally we have weakness, and uh, there's low interest rates globally. So you know, the Fed is under no pressure to raise interest rates dramatically, because the rest of the world, developed world, has them at zero. Japan will never raise interest rates. Uh, they can't. They're trapped. They're 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 effectively tra they're absolutely trapped. Um, We've talked about that a lot of times in newsletters and past um, quarterly commentaries. Uh, Europe, uh, you know, they're trying to print their way out too. So, um, so low interest rates are not necessarily inflationary anymore. Inflationary anymore. We've had uh, countries competing currency, that currency, this currency, that currency. So now there's like the currency wars have been going on, where Japan lowered their currency value, and then then the U.S. was printing money, and we lowered our print currency value. Now Europe says, hey, that works pretty well. Let me do it. And Australia's got to lower interest rates because their economy is tanking because it's very uh, mining and resource based, and that econ that market is just terrible. Uh, so, you know, central banks have leeway to lower interest rates, and then the emerging economies, which were going to be the ones that challenged our currency, you know, Brazil and and China and uh, Australia, they, you know, because commodities are not doing so well and the prices are down, and there's for some reason just demand. I don't know what it is for for commodities is way down. Um, Maybe because of slow growth and the fact that people don't have money to buy things uh, in, in many parts of the world, then this just that means that there's no challenge to the U.S. dollar. So the Fed has a lot more leeway now to just to, to, to mess around and keep interest rates low. They don't have to raise rates, and they could probably print more money. I don't know what that if that would if they would completely lose credibility. I'm starting more and more to think that that the that that. that uh, until something really significant happens, the central banks are just going to keep trading spots and printing money and lowering their currencies. And so the fact that we're all acting like Zimbabwe has no negative effect on, 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 uh, on our currencies or, or stability. But what does this mean? If rates stay low and the, the Fed's not forced to act, you know, we'll still be earning a quarter percent in our bank accounts. Stocks will probably stay up and maybe rise slowly. And I think the, behind this whole thing, though, what we eventually might see is that the real winner here might be gold. I mean, the only currency that cannot be printed, as more and more people start realizing, geez, you know, I mean, the, 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 these, these, the dollars, they're going to keep printing dollars, they're going to print euros, they're going to print yen. Uh, China's economy is not doing so well, they have to lower interest rates, so where are we going to go? And we may see gold, you know, finally hit its, uh, its next leg up, which might be its final leg up. I mean, there may be, who knows what is going to happen, but I think gold is up for one more strong, super panicky leg up. Um, but in the meantime, um, after Jana came out and basically said, you know, we're in no rush to raise interest rates, stocks took off yesterday with healthcare leading the way uh, because the healthcare is making new all time highs and the rest of the market is near all time highs, but healthcare has been a leading sector, so it's going first. So we have increased exposure to healthcare, and our main exposure right now on the long side that we have for our clients is, uh, you know, active clients is healthcare, um, regional banks, and, uh, and, uh, and global stocks in general are the big ones. Uh, we also have some positions in a couple of, of, of large companies, and we also have a significant allocation to a, tr a trend-following manager, which is a quantitative um, strategy that just follows market trends as they go along. It's not based on emotion. It's purely mathematical. So those are our, our biggest holdings right now. We are still short a little bit of, of retail for the active clients, um, but with today's news, it kind of blew out you know the idea of shorts and 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 bonds were, were bidding and rates were dropping so we may people wanted to go back to like it was in 2012 and 13 with you know rates down and, and party time for stocks so 
we'll see if that happens. But just, um, you know, we'll, but we'll be watching. But there's no one to say what's going to happen. But I'm keeping my eye on gold. And silver might, might be bottoming here. So that may be the play eventually. The last thing I want to, want to share with you guys is just some scenes and uh, uh, random pictures of, of the past week or two in California. Some of the stuff I've looked at, everything from the economy developing here to uh, in the city to some of the fun parks we've gone to and sites we've seen. So enjoy, okay? Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'd love to hear from you. Hey, everyone, a little downtown San Francisco update. We've got this enormous structure being built. This is a uh, train bus terminal, I believe, where a lot of your uh, Greyhound type buses are going to stop and uh, just some serious construction. Uh, this was the old postal building, and this was their parking lot. So this is all new. You notice that. That's the infinity towers behind it. Those are the infinity towers. Um, this is all new development. Nice stuff. Love all the trees in the city. This is this is beautiful. Further along the same walk, I used to, you see, I walk under the Bay Bridge and I go visit my friend Greg, who was uh, formerly a, a NASA engineer, now doing other things in the software world. But uh, this walk is very relaxing. I always find parking on this street free parking. It's still two hour, and a lot of people don't. Well, a lot of people know enough people know enough about it, but it was always kind of quiet. I just walked by three or four parking spots, so. You know, here I am in the pretty cool uh, section of San Francisco, find some two-hour free parking, not bad. I'm sure they'll get around to charging for it eventually, though. Walking under the Bay Bridge, my little iPhone camera cannot, uh, I don't think it's going to be able to catch the scope of this. But it's a pretty big bridge, there's probably some seriously heavy steel cables inside that casing. Uh, but this is the bridge that goes, towards, goes over Oakland, towards Oakland. And... Uh, it goes out to uh, Treasure Island, and then after that, excuse me, goes out to Treasure Island, then it, uh, the other side of the bridge, the longer part connects to Oakland. There's a community park and dog park they put up next to the Bay Bridge. That's the structure right there. It's just my iPhone camera can't catch the scope of this. But it's a dog park and a little amusement area for kids. There's the doggy park up there. Great resource. Near the highway, that's the Bay Bridge on ramp. The water is about two blocks over, one block that way. Embarcadero, the main water belt street. But uh, just beautiful to walk around here. You know, like certain parts of Boston, just lots of trees, lots of leafy green. But it's this way year round. You know, even if it gets down cool, 50 something degrees, it's just this greenery stays. So it's real nice. Thank you.